Hey there, StarCraft fans! It's Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft II Legacy of the Void. Today it's going to be a best of three at about the mid-rake madness level. Sent to me over Discord, and this is going to be a Patreon submission. In the bottom right-hand corner, we have the green Protoss player, Elithodon. And in the top left-hand corner, it is the pink Zerg player, Bonsai. Alright, representing the Falcon Paladin clan. Look at that! Look at that spinning logo. Look how fancy it is. Oh, it's so nice. It's so nice. All right. So, what are we going to see here out of our ZVP best of three? My favorite matchup in all of StarCraft 2 and probably StarCraft 1 as well. Both players are pretty well evenly matched here. That is my understanding anyway. Both players know what they're doing anyway. Walling off the front here on Parasite. Here in game number one is the Protoss Elithodon and a hatch first out of Bonsai. So, nothing too insane. No proxies, no proxy hatch, no proxy anything from anybody at this stage, but doing a nice job probe scouting is a lithodon. He will see the hatch first to play, he'll see the extractor, he'll see the pool and recognize, okay, no early lings coming at me, this is not a 12 pool, op 12 pool opening from the Zerg, which is nice, which is very, very nice of him to do. And he's going for a double gateway opening, oh, a lithodon. <gasps> Are you being sneaky? Are you being a sneaky Protoss? Are you trying to go for double gateway zealot pressure here against this vulnerable Zerg whose spawning pool isn't even halfway done yet? I don't know, or you're just walling off. That seems entirely possible too. It could be the case that you're just walling off. And I don't know, two gateways are here because you want two adepts eventually. It's kind of a weird build. It does delay your expansion quite a bit. You don't have enough money to expand, not even close at this point, not even half of it. Now you have half, but it's a still a bit of a long way off here, at least in StarCraft terms. Oh, the probe is fighting. The probe is fighting, and the probe gets picked off just by a couple of the drones here from Bonsai. He didn't pull his whole mineral line to try to kill this thing, so that was nice. That was a good job by him. Didn't overcommit, but didn't undercommit either. And as a result, we are, we're are we good to go. Probe is down. Scouting is done. Could throw down a Roach Warren or something, but it looks like Bonsai instead is going for a couple lings to deal with any early pressure. That might come his way. It is two adepts, though, with a zealot holding the wall. <gasps> and, okay, I thought, I thought for a second he wasn't going to expand, and this would be a sneaky one base play, but the Overlord sees this anyway, recognizes, okay, it's double gate. They're both working on something. There's a zealot in the wall. I'm going to need enough to defend against two adepts here, or two zealots, although two zealots would be a bit silly as they are slow and take forever to come across the map. So what is he doing? He's getting a Roach Warren. He's got a handful of links here. I might be under committing on Zerglings, dude. You saw those two Adepts come over here. I know you're getting a Roach Warren, but you're droning up. You're not making links. The Queen here, and how many links is this? Six of them? Six links and a Queen. I don't know about two Adepts. That said, the Adepts are not coming in. There we go. Looking very smart and fancy. In their green. Oh, no, no, no. Here we go. Here come the adepts. They're not getting surrounded. Oh, they're kind of getting surrounded. One adept dies. Actually, you know what? This might be enough Zergling to do this. Wow. I did not expect that to work at all from Bonsai, but he said, Falcon, what are you worried about? I had exactly enough to hold that. Chill. And I was like, all right, all right, man. I'm, I'll chill. Great job. Great job by you. I still feel like with some better micro Olithodon, could have kept those alive. Maybe picked off some drones and whatnot, and maybe get around behind the mineral line. Keep moving, keep moving, keep moving. The slow lings can't consistently attack you that way. Anyway, it's a Stargate opening here from Elithodon. And it's going to be Roaches from Banzai. Look how shiny that star is. It's almost blinding white. Like, you can't hardly tell what's going on. Hardly tell what's going on. Overlord scouting from Banzai. Fantastic job by him going to see the Stargate say, all right, Stargate opening, nothing too weird. I've seen this a hundred thousand times from my Protoss opponents. Spore Crawler, Queens, etc. will be just fine. Third base would be nice from Bonsai here too, unless it's a two base attack. Unless he's just going to go for a huge Roach Ravager attack at the front. But that said, that's why you go Stargate, is to hold the huge Roach Ravager attacks. Avoid Ray is in, like immeasurably important in that situation. A Phoenix? Eh. Maybe not going to help all that much. I still love that there's no spore crawlers coming up at all from Banzai. He saw the Stargate and he's just like, nah, I don't need spores. We're good to go. We can we can hold this with queens, which is not true. If it was an oracle, your drones would be in a lot of trouble, mister. But here we go. Bit of a roach attack. It's not a crazy all-in or anything like that. It is still 31 workers back home for Banzai. Uh, is he no, still making roaches? Maybe it is. Maybe he's just going to pump roaches from this point on. 
and see what he can do. I mean, this is really bad news. It's an Oracle on the way here, which is nice. Oracle pretty good against Roach. But Roaches have some good HP, and it takes a long time for an Oracle to chew through that. Oh, Ravagers, though. Oh, man. Banzai, this Ravager attack is really good stuff here. There's only a Zealot holding this. Okay, there's three Stalkers, but Stalkers trade horribly versus Ravagers in every situation. They don't... Stalkers don't do bonus damage to Ravagers. And here we go, man. That pylon is in a lot of trouble right now. The Zealot goes down. Attacking from the other side. Moving the Wounded Ravager to the back. Pylon out. And yeah, now we're just wandering through. No big deal. We outnumber you about 3-1 to one right now. And suddenly, everybody is just pretty much dead. For a Lithodon, sometimes that happens in StarCraft. Sometimes your opponent shows up with like 10 units at your front door. 10 Roaches and a few Ravagers and... Depowers all your warp gates, and you got a phoenix and an oracle, but it's just not enough. Immortals coming in here. Oh man, if that pylon dies. If that. Oh, the pylon dies. Depowers both of the robotics facilities. Oracle uselessly trying to kill these units. It gets taken down by corrosive bile. Bonsai. Masterful Roach Ravager attack there, and a Lithodon gets out. Two base cheese, says a Lithodon. I mean, a two base Roach Ravager timing attack. Yeah? No cannon, says Bonsai. I don't think a cannon would have helped you, man. I am convinced a cannon would not have saved you there at all. Failed harassment. That's true. Failed harassment. Took my chance with a roach all in, says Bonsai. Yeah, he saw no cannon, no shield battery. And said, let's go. I gates warping in. Yeah, they're just too late. Is the problem. Look at this banter between these two players. And robotics facilities finishing up. Yeah, man. Uh, would two immortals be enough against this? I'm not sure that it would, honestly. I mean, immortals are great, but... Especially against the Ravagers, where they don't do bonus damage versus them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alright, so Bonsai gets game number one in this best of three. Let's see what happens in game number two. Um, right now. The three will be on Blue Shift, the latter edition. Top right-hand corner, the Green Zerg player, Elithidon. And in the bottom left-hand corner, the pink Zerg player, Banzai. Yeah, so pretty evenly matched, I would say. I mean, it just came down to a matter of a few seconds there. Two Immortals would have helped out very nicely against those Roaches and Ravagers, but I'm not entirely sure it would have been enough. Hmm, I need to test that out in the uh, test map. Or unit testing tool. That is the proper name for it. All right, so once again, thank you for supporting me here on a patreon and i just can't express how much it means to me that you guys support me monetarily it helps me just keep going it helps me cast a lot of starcraft and a brood war and you know keeps me encouraged Alrighty then oh hang on a second hang on a second okay i thought that pro was going out but no just threw down a four oh threw down a forge Oh, snap, Alithodon. Are you going cheese for cheese here? I'm liking it. I'm liking it here. What is the skin here on this green? It looks amazing. On this probe, it looks like he has giant eyes on the side of his head. Kind of looks like an alien. And that green really reminds me of, like, the 90s. Oh, another probe down, though. Once again, Banzai responding perfectly to that. Just being like, what's up, man? Uh, I can, ha I, can ha I can handle it, no problem. Very true. Very true, you can. Overlord scouting on over. Hatchery gonna pop. Spotting pool just about done here, too. So, why the forge from a Lithodon? Does he really want to get cannons up that early to deal with Roach Ravager type stuff? Yeah, he's getting an expansion down, and he wasn't planning on using the probe to throw down cannons because he brought it right into that mineral line and started killing drones. If you do that, you kind of forfeit the ability to get cannons down because that probe is gonna be the focus of attention for the rest of the game. At least for the next few minutes when you would be throwing cannons down and really making them worth anything. But here's your wall. Cybernetic score on the way from a Lithodon. Second gas really should be the next thing on the production tab. It's a weird build, once again, from a Lithodon. I mean, it's not two gates first weird, but it's Forge in here, and he's not getting a second gas yet. There it is. There's the second gas. Maybe he's just late with it. Maybe he's discombobulated after being on the receiving end of that Roach Ravager stuff. And yeah, entirely possible. We are at 21 to 18 workers. A Lithodon has that lead because, again, Chrono Boost is amazing. Chrono Boost is so, so good here in the early stages of the game. Shield Battery coming in here, too. Man, look at a Lithodon. He's like, I'm ready. 
I am ready for Zerglings. I'm ready for Roaches. Raviders, maybe not at this point, but you can't have them anyway because it's too early for that. Third base for Bonsai, just about complete here. So he is going for more of a macro style. Here in game number two, a Lithodon playing it a little bit safe. He's getting a Stargate up later than it normally would be in this kind of a build, just because he got the Shield Battery and the Forge first before he got the expansion. Well, before he got the Stargate. Anyway, Stalker on the way here too, and really nothing much going on for Bonsai. He's just going for speed. Third base is done. He's working on Queens. He's maybe spreading some creep here, maybe? No, no, the Queens don't have the energy to spread creep as it turns out, but that is the second gas for Bonsai, and is he getting, yes, Queen here at the third base too, so good job by him. Good job by Bonsai. Overlord scouting on in is, again, going to scout the Stargate. Just really good Overlord timings here from Bonsai. I like it. I need to learn from this Zerg, actually. I sometimes send my Overlords in too late or a little bit too early, and there's nothing to see, and it's like, I don't know. I don't know what to do, but it is an Oracle coming in from Elithodon. Got Spore Crawlers on the way from Bonsai. Yep, very nice in all three mineral lines. Once he sees that happening, you can tell it's coming out of the Stargate by the shape of the thing that's coming out here, and that is an oracle. It's hard to see, but it's a little short and kind of circular, and that tells you exactly what it is. It's really weird, man. It's really the only unit-producing structure in the game that gives you a hint as to what it is making from the outside. Eggs? No, no use at all. You don't know if it's drones or ultralisks coming out of those eggs. It's the same size egg, which is so weird. Anyway, spore crawlers are up, and queens are ready to go. I really don't see this oracle getting much done at all from a lithodon. And here goes nothing. Queen, stab, 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 spore crawler, stab, stab, stab. Yeah, major hit. Taking hole damage already is our Oracle. And again, more hole damage on that spore crawler. Pulsar Beam comes in, but you dead. All right, man. One kill. Pieces fall into the earth, landing on that creep very softly and gently. Kind of looked weird how, like, softly and gently it landed there on that creep. Regardless. Regardless, here we are. Overlord still scouting because stalkers still haven't shooed this guy away yet. Look at this. He's not even he's not even being like I'm gonna hide my tech from you. That's a Twilight Council, that's a robotics facility, that's two robo facilities and a Twilight before the Overlord dies. Now if Lithodon was sneaky here, he would cancel all these buildings. Right? He'd cancel all of them and be like Aha! Now you don't know what I'm up to, but he's not. He's definitely going with exactly what Bonsai scouted here. He got supply blocked by losing that Overlord, and he kind of got started a little bit late on Replacement Overlord. So he has supply blocked here at the five and a half minute mark, which is not a good place to be. Supply blocked, especially as a Zerg on three bases. You really want to get that drone count up, and you can't do it if you don't have the Overlords to provide that control. And that is the lore answer here to why Overlords exist, is they provide Psy control to the Swarm. You don't have enough Overlords, you lose control of the Swarm, and... Eh? I mean, it doesn't really make any sense if you dig too far into it because you still... If you lose a ton of Overlord, you still have the units that don't go feral or anything. It's not like they stop working either. They're still the same. You just can't make any new ones. I don't know. I, I just... I would be interested if... Just to try something, like try a version of StarCraft where... If you lost enough Overlords to get supply blocked, a certain number of your units would just stop responding to commands. They just do whatever they wanted to do. If that meant attacking your own stuff in your base, fine. If that meant attacking the enemy, you couldn't stop them from doing it. It'd be fun. It'd be weird. It'd be messy. And I'm sure Zerg players would hate it, but it'd be interesting at the very least. Temple Archive's done for a Lithodon here, too. This is looking extremely scary from our Protoss player here. He's got additional gateways. He's going for charge. He's got Storm. He has Immortals. This is one of these really scary two-base pushes from Protoss with Storm... For all Lings and Hydras, Immortals for Roaches, and maybe some Archons in there just for everything for good measure, if you can pull that off. So Bonsai really needs to get something going that's going to work against that. Hydra, a good answer. Lurker, a pretty good answer too, assuming you can get Lurkers down, right? Assuming you can get Lurkers in time before the Immortal count gets too high, or if the Immortal count never gets that high. Uh, you can make Lurkers work really, really well against this composition. Storm just doesn't do much to Lurkers. Zealots don't do that well either. Uh, stalkers just get torn apart by Lurkers because of that bonus damage versus Armored. And especially with the, all the creep spread we're seeing here, I think Bonsai is going to have enough time to respond to whenever a Lithodon decides to move out. There's that Lurker down about 50% complete, working on Grooved Spines, the upgrade for Hiders that gives them additional attack range. 
And creep spreading it, man. That is what we want to see. Pushing out a little bit here is a Lithodon just kind of testing the waters with his Immortal. With his Stalkers, with his Zealots. There's an Archon. Okay, so there's at least one Archon. Man, that green Archon is hotness. Really is. Ling's rolling in, getting absolutely massacred by this army, saying, Oh, okay, we need Hydra's yesterday. So Hydra's coming in. Lurker Den is not quite done yet, but he's going to have time. He's going to have time to get those Lurkers, especially if Elithodon, yeah, just setting up for a third base. I was going to say, there's no reason to stand here unless you're getting a third. And that is going to delay his attack a little bit. This front door is wide open. Banzai, next time, Ling's, man. Just right on through, right into the main base. Mortals pop out, blah, 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 dead. I mean, just free immortals. How delus delicious. How delicious and juicy would that be? Or Archons on the way. It's weird how they're blue in the production tab when they're very distinctly green down here. Man, green Archons are amazing. I like it a lot. I really do. Okay, here comes a Lithodon. Thinking about stuff, anyway. <laughs> Not quite moving out there. Uh, Bonsai has been time, uh, been given time to make a bajillion Hydras. He's got 20. He's got four Lurkers. So working on plus two missile attack. This is looking real, real bad for a Lithodon. A fourth base on the way from a Banzai, a mortal count. I mean, I don't know what really matters. Maybe the Hiders alone can just kind of win this. Oh, some Lurkers die instantly though. Wow. Wow. Venturing off creep there and two Lurkers died almost instantly to that army. That was not good control by Banzai. That was very, very dangerous for sure. Lings, man, that front door is open. I understand you want to shut down an attempted base here, but it's over here, dummies. Yeah, man, that front door is deliciously wide open. There are some zealots warping in now, but are they going to hold the wall is the question. The zealot comes down and says, stop knock, knock, knocking on this pylon. And these lings are like, you know what? We don't like what we see here at all. We're going to go join the rest of the forces marching onto the creep here, killing some hydras, then pulling back off the creep as a lithodon. Zergling's fighting. No, not good for you guys at all. Archon's in the front, man. This is just exactly what you want. Lurker, oh, where's your observer? The observer's hanging back. Observer, be at the front. Be at the forefront. Be brave. That's so the hydras could pick it off. That is some good control by Bonsai if he can do that, though. We have surveillance mode here from the observer. That is what that's called. Yeah, I looked it up today. I used to think it was observation mode, but it's surveillance mode. Anyway, can you creep spread up this cliff if you already have creep over here? I don't think that's how that works. Creep spread goes up like ramps, but not just directly up cliffs. So these should spread this way, but not... Th it is spreading this way, maybe because there's already creep here. The rules of how creep spread works are kind of confusing to me sometimes. And as someone who's been playing Zerg since 1998, that's not ideal. That is not ideal at all. Uh-uh. All right. So marching on in, 138 to 128 total supply. Elithodon has the lead. Army supply fairly similar, though. And, man, these plus two attack hiders are just so scary. Lurker storming just beautifully, though. That Lurker dies instantly there to the north. Elithodon being extremely patient, but dang, Swarm host on the way from Banzai. That is an excellent, excellent answer from Banzai. Oh man, Swarm Host versus this composition. Yeah, the Zealots will die, the Stalkers will die, the Immortals will die. They get some amazing storms off. Sure, you can kill a couple waves of Locusts, but those waves are endless. They never stop coming. I love the consistent creep spread here too from Banzai. It's just continuing to push towards Elithodon. He can't go anywhere without being spotted here. And some of what Protoss is about is the element of surprise. If you can show up on the front door of your opponent's base and they don't know you're coming, you have a huge, massive advantage here, but man, Swarm Host. Swarm Host. All right, man. Here we go. Let's hit it. Maybe support with some Hydras in there. What do you think? What do you say? Something, I guess. Changelings get tossed down. Ooh, extend a thermal lance on the way. Colossus is a pretty good answer to Swarm Host, as it turns out. Oh, Queens, run. Get back on the creep. Interesting dance here. Oh, do you hear that? Do you hear the locusts sing? Zealots on top of this. Dropping the locust on top of the army here. Not doing a whole lot, actually. And zealots are gone. Archon gone. Storm really good. Just eating these storms are these hiders. Trying to split, man. But yeah. So many storms present. It's only going to be a mortal stalker zealot here, which immortals are sorry. Hiders are pretty great against. 
12 more Hydras on the way, clearing out all this creep that Bonsai spent so much time trying to throw down. Creep spreading, you know, going to continue. Going to keep creep spreading over this way. Even if the center is going to be a little bit, uh, be a little problematic here. Anyway, this is what I'm talking about. Protoss marches up to the third base like he owns the joint. And he's going to take this thing down. I just don't see how he saves it. Good storm on the Locusts. They're wounded before they get there, but a couple units do end up dead. Hatchery falls. Hydra is trying to come out. Swarm host useless for the next bunch of seconds here. It's a 41 second cooldown on that Locust ability. And a Lithodon. It's a bit of a scrappy ragtag army here, but they're making it happen. Six kills on that Immortal. Seven, nine, 18 on that guy. What? And yeah, man, Hydra's trading out pretty well here versus these Immortals. A Lithodon is not attacking with his whole army, and three Immortals go down for pretty much nothing there for Banzai. Oh, the Storms are back, though. The Storms are back with more. More of these High Templars. So it's three base to three base right now. Banzai is sitting at uh, 39 workers to 65 for a Lithodon. He needs to defend this, and he needs to do it well. And the Swarmers are not doing nearly as much as I thought they would do. Landing on in, and... Wow. Just, just dying there. Not enough, Locust, I don't think. Not enough to make this thing happen. Colossus wanders in, kills the Creep Queen. Clearing this creep, thanks to the Observer doing surveillance mode over here. And got that one too. That was a good one to get. Alright, so Colossus joining the party versus these Hydras. And yeah, Swarmhost getting focused down. That is a priority right now. Getting stuck on the ramp a little bit here is a Lithodon. Uh, sitting back here and just... Blah, blah, are the Colossus. And yeah, it looks like Lithodon has the thing. 147 to 49 supply. The Colossus, you're just the cherry on top of this ice cream cake. Are there usually cherries on top of ice cream cakes? I don't know. I could have been making that up entirely. But that's it. Good game from Banzai. And Elithodon is your winner of game number two. Is there going to be more conversation? Absolutely not, Falcon. We are done. Elithodon wants to kill, keep wrecking stuff. Then he's done too. So nine kills on that. Colossus. Again, I like playing the how many kills that these immortals get game. 15, 25, 23, and 11, and 19. Good golly. Good golly, Immortals are good. They are so good, you guys. So good job by Elithidon making enough of them. Lurkers didn't do much in that game. Swarmhost did less than I expected in that game, and Elithidon ties it up one to one. Nicely done. Nice job. We're going to go into a game number three here. I'm excited for this one. It seems pretty evenly matched so far. I feel like Bonsai had some good ideas, but just didn't make enough Swarmhost. Uh, the storm dodging in a couple of these battles wasn't as good as it otherwise could have been. He was creep spreading very well but might have been at the expense of some other stuff that would have been useful. So here we are with game three right now. All right, it's game three on Automaton, the latter edition. Left-hand side of this map and a little bit down is the green Protoss player. And then the other side is going to be the pink Zerg player. A little bit up and on the right. I'm not entirely sure still how to refer to players' positions on this map, but I'm going to figure it out eventually. Okay, so, you're down, well, tied, one to one, those immortals, Doe, I think Doe works there, why did he correct himself to do? Lithodon has some issues with autocorrect, which actually doesn't help him here in StarCraft, there is no autocorrect in StarCraft 2. Gateway opening, Hydras went splat, they sure did, that was more the storm than the immortals though. Uh, I mean, unless there were situations where the immortals were basically evenly numbered with the Hydras. Which should never happen because Hydras are way cheaper than Immortals are. Anyway, Hatch coming down here from Banzai. Hatch first here. Hope if Falcon looks at the kills. I wonder which one was the MVP. Hey, I did it! I did look at the kills. It was one of them that had like 30, man. Or 28 or something ridiculous like that. I do like the game of look at how many units these Immortals have killed because they are so good. They are so good units and ZVP especially, it feels like. Maybe I only look in ZVP because I'm biased against Protoss, but... I just don't see them being that great in... Well, in PvP they're good, but maybe not in PvT necessarily. But PvP they can be extremely important. Alright, spawning pool. Extractor here from Banzai. Nothing too nuts from the Zerg player at all. That's a cyber core from a Lithodon after the expansion. The second gas coming up with the second pylon. And then the second gas coming up. Just kidding, it's another forge. So he's playing that very, very safe opening again. Or he's worried about roach attacks from Banzai, and I can't necessarily blame him. Kind of in a game where you got up with that big scary Protoss army and wasn't held or responded to 
perfectly by Banzai, and he got wrecked. It uh, it could make a lot of sense to maybe see some early roach attacks from Banzai. Alithodon just wants to make sure that's not what happens, or if it does happen, he doesn't die to it. To it. Two probes holding that until the Zealot comes in. Is that actually a tight wall? I don't know, and Alithanon doesn't either. <laughs> well, he just tested it, I think. He just tested it with a probe, couldn't get through, and had to mineral walk through it. So, All right, fair enough, dude. Do you have a cannon? Yep, cannon on the way. But yeah, man, that third hatch basically tells you you don't have to worry about early aggression from Banzai at all for the next couple of minutes here. Maybe some lings show up. And in that case, having a cannon is going to be useful. No big deal. Pylon, simulator, simulator. And yeah, still no higher tech here. That is a shield battery, man. Alithodon is definitely kind of sacrificing his ability to go for some uh, some further tech at the altar of making sure he doesn't die to early stuff from Banzai. And I can't necessarily blame him for doing that. I mean, after game one, I'd be a little gun shy too if I were him. It is a Roach Warren from Banzai, though. There it is. Roach Warren on the way. Let's make sure that we have a. Uh, let's make sure that we have our oracle name list ready. I didn't. I didn't really make a ton of effort there to name that oracle, just because. Well, in fairness, I didn't feel like it would do a whole lot because it was by itself, and there were already spores down. And I was right; it got one kill, and didn't really deserve to be named at that stage, in my opinion. Anyway. Alrighty then, what are we working on? Just more drones, guys. Bonsai just droning his face off. He does have the Roach War, and he's going to be up pretty substantially in worker count right about now. That's a 38-31 to 31 lead at the 3.5 minute mark of the game. Double gas. No extra gas coming up for a Lithodon, so he's not going to be teching up. At least not super strong anytime soon here. Yeah, he's just probing. He's working on warp gate and whatnot. No harassment whatsoever, except... Ah! There's a proxy Twilight Council here from Alithodon and a gateway. This is going to be Dark Templars, you guys. This is going to be Dark Templar, and this is spitting distance from Banzai. Like, if he set a queen here, he could go... Patooey! And hit that thing with spit. Guaranteed. Now, the question is... The question is, my good friend... Does Banzai recognize what is happening? He is... Kind of scouting... He sees that gas has not been taken. Where my dark shrine is at? Where my dark shrine is at? Why would you make a Twilight Council up here with no dark shrine? Another pylon. Come on, man. Don't tease me with DTs and then not make any DTs. With it on, I will find you. I am casting this at 12.15 in the morning. And if you don't make DTs, I'm going to be very upset. I'm just, I'm gonna, I'm just saying it. He's going, really? Charge over here? So this is just hiding tech. This isn't hiding, well, hiding a dark shrine would be hiding tech too, but. All right, man, fair enough. I mean, not that the Overlord's scouting anyway. Everything in your main base is totally hidden. But being able to warp in from over here is actually pretty scary. Really, really scary. Actually, is that Blind Spore? That is Blind Spore Crawlers. Is there a Stargate anywhere on the map? Nope. You can't. You got. Uh, for all the scouting that Bonsai has done so well in the series so far, for him to completely forget it happened or forget that scouting is a possibility is not great. Is charge done? It is not. It is close to done here. The Zealots are going to come in here anyway. There's a lot of Zealot, man. Look at the flea. That queen's like, nope. Bunch of roaches coming on in. These aren't charge lots, so the roaches will trade with them exceptionally well. That said, these drones are in trouble. In heck, heck amounts of trouble right now. Drones are fleeing for their lives. Hiding in a corner where it's easier for the zealots to kill them, actually. Uh, more roaches. Do we have more roaches in production? Because he's very soon going to be in a ton of trouble as these guys have charged. Rawr, the drones go down so fast. Roaches running. They recognize these are charge lots. 17 roaches. In production right now. Can Banzai hold on? He's getting surrounded. These roaches are not wanting to be surrounded, but they are. A bunch of these zealots are very low on HP, but they are not dead. And that's all that really matters here. Queens fighting. Roaches popping. Kind of at a decent place here where the charge... Oh, charge is available. More roaches coming from the third base, but more zealots are here too. This is a charge lot all in. Out of a lithodon right now. He's only got... Uh, what, he's got 41 workers back home. And Immortal on the way here too. No warp prism, but he doesn't need it because he set up a uh, 
actually set up a pylon so close to home. More drones dying. These guys are in the mineral line having a great time while the roaches are fighting with his brethren down here just south of the natural base. Drones running for their lives. Can they kill this queen is the question. Yeah, Roach bros. Roach bros come in and try to help the queen, but she does get picked off. Five more drones have gone down. We do have more zealots on the way. We do have some more zealots on the way. Uh, focusing down this third base exceptionally well. Bam, 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 bam. Third base does go down. Roach is here to fight. Okay, against charge lots, you really need to fight in amongst these crevices here. That said, if you outnumber them this much, you can just kind of fight them wherever you want. This is a lot of roaches, you guys. 15 roaches to one zealot and an immoral and a stalker. So army supply definitely favoring our Zerg player. The problem is he's down 32 to 43 workers. Uh, his third base is history. I don't know about this warp in from Elithodon. I really don't. It's a lot of roaches on the ground. Trying to go for that concave. And oh, the zealots were not even on attack move. What was that? Oh no, it's a blunder. Where are you? Are you? Wait, what? Are you move commanding? Where are you going move commanding? He's going somewhere move commanding. Let's see what he attacks. <laughs> he just wanders right over and tries to kill a drone. That is the craziest thing. All right, well, this cute little thing here from Elithodon is dead. Gonna lose his warp gates. Well, depower them anyway. And his Twilight Council. More roaches on the way. The counterattack uh, is gonna be dealt with quite nicely as there are two immortals here. Two immortals sitting back here with a cannon. That's gonna be hard. Hard to break. <laughs> Hard to break for sure. All right, where are we? Where are we with this thing? Mm, I don't see this counter working. I know Bonsai wants to do something with his units, and I understand that impulse. But, uh, like, one look at the double immortal sitting back here, and the cannon, and the shield battery, and he really should not. Not without Ravagers, at least. Can he f afford to upgrade to some Ravagers? Not really. He's got 92 gas in the bank. He is, oh, only two saturated on that extractor and no saturation on his first extractor. Well, possibly a second extractor here in the main. But yeah, the roaches kind of poke in and then like, yeah, I don't like it. I don't like what I see. Changelings do get focused down eventually by that cannon, recognizing, hey, those aren't my zealots. I mean, they are zealots. At least they kind of blend in on the battlefield. I have ranted about this before, but I feel like changelings should change into whatever units are nearby, not just... Marine Zergling Zealot, because if your Protoss opponent isn't making Zealots, they're like, hey, these Zealots are immediately recognizable as Changelings and they kill them. Sure, at the pro level, they do it anyway, regardless, but it'd be nice for us younger, younger, not younger, not always younger, older, worse at StarCraft folks to be able to tell a little bit more easily. Man, these Zealots are trading well. I remember when this was all minerals. What the heck was that? Is that an announcer pack? Either way, Zealots do get the Roach Warn, and they all die. But here we go, Roach Ravager at the front. Who's got... Was there a voice pack I heard there? I'm trying to get a voice pack. Meanwhile, Roach Ravager doing some pretty good work here at the front door. That Cybernetics Core is going to die. No more Stalkers for you. No more higher tech buildings for you either. And no Adepts and Sentries either. So a lot of stuff that you don't have here. Look at the cleaning bot. He's like, uh, oh, sorry, lab bot. Lab bot's like, hmm, ancient relics of Protoss civilization must assimilate. I think that's what he's saying. Crossobile's landing, getting some decent hits off here. Oh, the immortals though, they're real scary. And pushing back. Are you still still zealots, man? Is there? Oh, there's a warp prism just sitting here, just sitting here doing a lot of stuff. What are the upgrades on these dudes? They have plus two armor, but no attack upgrades, strangely enough. Very weird. Very weird upgrade paths here from Elithodon. This warp prism is like MVP of the match so far. Just hidden off that creep. Creep actually doesn't extend its vision too far past its own edge. Third base is back for Banzai. Uh, Zealots fighting again. Drones, you can't beat that. They have plus two armor. You do like no damage to them per hit. Zerglings coming out. Look at them just running past the zealot. Like, ah, uh, you know what? Queens, you handle these zealots. How's about that? The queens are like, ah, no. 
they say. Are we drop lording? Where's the Zergling going? Where are these Zerglings going? I don't know. Army supply 61 to 40 in favor of Bonsai. It's a bigger army, but some of... I mean... Rope Ravager is going to have a bigger army supply, but they don't stand up very well to this particular composition that Elithodon is working on. The Lings do finally clean that up, but four more drones have died. It is 25 workers killed by Elithodon, you guys. 25. That is a hugely, insanely stupid number. Third base coming in for Elithodon. And we've got roaches, we've got ravagers hanging out here. And yeah, I mean, at this point, I just... Upgrades are great for Bonsai. He really needs upgrades. He needs to tech up, too. I don't think he can win this thing with Roach Ravager unless he maxes out on Roach Ravager and goes. But not really in a position to do that. Not with 22 total workers. Is this more Zealot stuff? This War Prism needs to die or be shooed away or something. I can't believe Bonsai's let this thing live as long as he has. I feel like this Roach Ravager actually maybe could force a cancel on that third if they position themselves correctly. I do like the Lings are rolling in. Lings getting a surround on this particular army composition of a mortal. Well, I guess there are some Zealots mixed in too, which is problematic, but... Mortals are kind of hard to distinguish from Stalkers here, but that is definitely seven Immortals on the ground, you guys. Seven of them. All right, so there's the wraparound. There's the Corosa Bile going down. Actually catching one of those Immortals quite nicely does take it down. The Ravager's not taking that extra damage from the Immortals, slowly clearing through them, pushing on in. Oh boy, this is looking really, really bad for Elithodon. Ravager, Roach doing some amazing work right now. The Zealots are stuck in the back. They charge into nothing there. Archon trying to do some stuff here, but again, severely outnumbered. Does get taken out, and suddenly it's 94 to 60 supply. Bonsai with the Ravager attack, just like in game number one. It's causing major problems for Elithodon. Probes fighting, they can afford to die here. Because Banzai has 22 workers behind this, 18 lings on the way. Banzai is trying to finish this off now. He is not macroing behind this in the teeniest or tiniest of bits. Cross of Bile is hitting that Archon. Archon does die. The War Prism thought about picking it up, but couldn't quite do it. <gasps> There's an Artosis Pylon in there, isn't it? It's a bit of an Artosis Pylon. Does deep power two warp gates and a robotics facility. But that's it. That is your good game. Holy smokes, Banzai. Bonsai managed to do it after losing 30 workers, 25 workers, ends up with 22 at the 10 minute mark of the game and says, let's just go. Storm is now done. Yeah, having some Storm would have been extremely useful. Yeah, almost crumbled under those zealots, says Bonsai. You absolutely did almost crumble under those zealots. I can tell you that much. I've been there. I have been there for sure. But that's it. We are done. Ravagers, man, putting in work. A lot of these Ravagers were roaches that were made to defend against the Zealots back home during that big attack uh, of charge lots and just turned themselves, well, were morphed by whoever, the Overmind or Kerrigan or someone into Ravagers. And as a result, they were there, they were available, and the roaches, no, the roaches were not breaking this wall, but Ravagers are an entirely, entirely different story against Immortals and Stalkers and Zealots and Archons. Their extra range is useful. The Cross of Biles, amazing. Sure, they have fewer hit points, but the range makes up for it more than more than uh, people would expect. So 10 kills, 6 kills, 9 kills, 4, 5, 12, 5, 3, 12, and 6. Yeah, these are some cost-efficient Ravagers. That is immortal level cost efficiency. <laughs> you guys, they're cheaper than Immortals. And as a result, um, for them to get 12 kills is comparable to like 20-something on an Immortal. So great job. Great job by Bonsai taking our game number three and winning the entire best of three series for today. Great stuff by him. Great stuff by Elithodon. As he said, it really came down to just, just that last little bit there. No storm available. And that sunk our Protoss friend. All right. So that's going to be it from me. This has been Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft II Legacy of the Void and a Patreon submission. Go ahead, hit that like button, hit that subscribe if you like what you saw and what you heard today. I mean, honestly, you're subscribed and you probably hit the like button on my videos anyway. But again, check it out. Thanks again for being a supporter. I hope you enjoyed the cast. And until next time, as always, you take care of yourself.